to test ng class. So this is what the test at the red test and exposed uh, pop-up test we have seen. So let's run this once again. Uh, what we did all this. So so in the before class, I just launched the browser. And in the after class, I'm closing that. First before class annotation will execute. Then it will go to before method. Before method, every test before, first before method will execute. Then it will go to a test method. Right? That's what so we have seen in the last class. Let's run this. Right click. Run as a test in G test. After this, we'll write one more scenario. Uh, three more scenarios we're going to write. <coughs> see, that's what it worked. So you can see the output. Let me show you the uh, reports also. You have a nice reports and you can see the reports also here. Past one, failed zero, skipped zero. So, but this is not the actual, but let's go here. Uh, so you just know, uh, test output. Can you see here? Test output folder automatically generates. So refresh, refresh, and expand this test output folder. I told you three reports. So one is index.html, emailable report.html, and default suit folder under the default test.html. So these are the three reports you can find out. Let's go to one by one index.html. So copy this HTML file and open in any of the browsers. So you will see a nice report here. So you can see a suit file, suit name, test name, classes, class tag, then classes. So this is your class package dot class name. Then close the classes tag. So classes tag inside class tag. So you can mention individual class with a class tag, then test tag and suite tag. And then we have a, so chronological view. See first before class, before method, test method. After test method, at the rate after method. At the rate after method, after class. So this is the order of our test case execution now based on our annotations. Before class executed, before method then, then test method, then after method, then after class. So this is the order of execution. So we didn't ignore any test methods. So this is the last, you know, uh, all of our uh, reported.log messages. So these reported.log messages, right? These messages will show in this, See, they click on date and time picker link. So that's what, uh, no, these all these messages you can see. And yeah, so that's it. And see one method pass, one method. Uh, so pass and show. This is the test case. It will show it fails, means fail, it will show. So this is the one report. So let me show you other report. Emailable report.html. So right click. On that report, copy HTML and then simply paste it. This see now, this is the one very nice report you will get it here. Okay, so test passed one, skipped zero, retried zero. So that's what the so Selenium has to depend on the test ng framework to get the nice reports. There is no inbuilt uh, reporting mechanism in Selenium, so that's a drawback of Selenium. You can say these uh, limitations of Selenium. So it has to depend on the test ng framework. And then, so the last one is default test.html. After running, just refresh your project and your reports will be uh, refreshed with the latest report. Say this is the one. So test, see, passed, failed, skipped. One passed, zero failed, zero skipped. So started on Monday this time and 11 seconds it took. 
there are no groups here because we are not using any groups, right? So that's why no groups here. So your test case name, all logs you can find out, class, so then method name and show all your outputs, the log messages you can see here, okay? So this is the nice report you will get uh, with test engine. But anyhow, we are going to again modify this report with our extent reports in the framework. That I'll show you that, okay? don't worry. So, okay, and now let's get started writing few more test methods. I want to write one more test method. So if you want to write any test method, you have to put at the rate test. Then write the method. What is your test method syntax? So public void the method name button test. So I'm writing a button test, curly bracket, and this is the method structure. So the method above you're putting at the rate test annotation that represents it's a test case. Now I will write a description for this. Description equal to so fetch all buttons. Okay, so that's my description for this method, what I'm going to do. So again, a similar action we are going to perform. See, we have here button. So you need to click on this button. So if you want to click, so this is a A tag. A tag means it's a link. So write reported dot log reporter dot log so click on button link so then true so what it will do this will log in the reports and also in the console if you put a true for this method if you pass two arguments one is a string and one is a boolean it will print this message to console also. That's the meaning of this second parameter. Now, driver dot find element. So by dot link text. So the button, the so link name, I'm clicking on that link. So always click action you will do on the link. Done. Next, what do you need to do? If you click on the button, so he has to verify this page title. So how can you get that page title? Go to head tag in the HTML and look for the title tag. I think meta tags, then you have a title. If you don't find the title, I told you the trick. So you have to search with the title tag. So copy this title and wait. So wait for this title So write. So we dot until expected conditions, expected conditions dot title contains, this is the title. If you want to assert, assert it. So assert dot assert equals, assert equals, so I told you the best approach is string button title equal to, this is the best approach. You should not use the value two places. So, and I have my actual value, driver dot get, title. So basically I'm getting a runtime page title. I'm comparing with my expected value. So that's what, that's what accept equals means. Next. So I verified the page title also. So then I need to fetch all these button names into one collection, a group of similar kind of elements you can fetch into a collection that is list collection. So how can you fetch all this? So 
right click inspect so button type and id class so observe that what is common between multiple buttons okay so id class id you should not use because id is unique so you want to get a group of things means what is common property between all these buttons so observe that what is common what did you observe the common thing type and class just can type so type yeah type one but type we don't have a locator right we have a class locator based yes. on the class locator you can fetch all of them yes so the z button see class is common for all the buttons mm -hmm. so why we are taking a common thing because you need to get all these buttons into a list so if there is a common thing, Selenium will automatically look for the how many elements are with this property. All those elements will get them into a list collection. So that's what I'm doing now based on the so reporter dot log fetch all the buttons into list collection. Come on, true. Okay, so then what we need to do here is so once you fetch all of them, so let's store them it's all web element type web element list web element and button list equal to so driver dot find elements find elements by dot what is that uh, locator class name locator name locator so just give the class value. Sorry, not this one, right? So let's go and get that class value. Ched button. Ched button. See what, what this find elements, find elements means please understand, plural. It, it finds all the elements in this browser based on this value and stores here so meaningful driver means browser reference in the browser finding all the elements by class value and stores it here so now you will get all the buttons here so you got the all the buttons with the z button class value so I'm just, instead of that, reporter.log only I'll use. Because I can print directly with reporter.log itself. So collection size. Size are number of buttons. Instead of the number of buttons I'll put. Number of buttons. So, Then list dot size. True. So I'm asking to print. Then iterate the collection. How can you iterate the collection? For each loop. So for each loop you use. For and uh, so you want to use for each loop or you want to use a normal for loop, it's all up to you. So for each loop, if you want to use the collection data type is this one, web element. First write the data type of the collection, mm -hmm. space, the variable name, btn, colon, the collection name. The collection name is this one. Now this will represent the each button from this collection. So each button text we want. Each button text we want. 
So I'm going to print each button text. So text tab the button. So BTN dot get text. Element. BTN is an element. How can you get the element text? Get text. Get text. That's it. So it will fetch the each element text to button text to I am printing to the console. That's it. So once you get, see the, right, once you get all these buttons, yeah, that's all. Uh, you don't need to do anything here. Just get all the button names. That's a one simple test case. Okay? That's a simple test case. I'll just put some... Okay, that's all. And let's move on to the next test case. Checkbox test. There is a one more checkbox test here. So this is the very challenging. So, so this again, you have to do the same thing. You have to click on this checkbox. So, see when, when it comes to previous, you know, next page and uh, the link is not showing properly. So, now see here, no spaces. Before one is uh, having a space. Um, fetch all checkboxes. And I'll put a checkbox test. So, click on checkbox. And uh, check box and just to change here only. I can say check box title. So I'll just change um, simply. So what I want to do here, that's it. So everything, see so quicker uh, code, right? You can just change that. Now, so you need to fetch all the check boxes. List collection. So, checkbox list. So, driver dot find elements by dot. You need to see what is common there. Okay, may may not be same as a class. Okay, we we might need to take a different. What is common for all these checkboxes? So, let's take this. Inspect and see that uh, input. So checkbox are going to have input tag. So you have a type checkbox, ID, role, area checked, area labeled. So next one, next checkbox. See what is common here. Because you need to get all these checkboxes, right? Type, ID, role, area checked. So but type is common here. No other thing is common. So what you need to do is you, you get all these checkboxes into collection by type uh, Attribute, but type is not a locator. So what you need to do, you have to build your own XPath with a type attribute. So I'm going to build XPath. So double forward slash star square bracket at the rate type attribute equal to what is the type attribute value? Checkbox. That's it. So now if you want to check this XPath is correct or not, you can go to your uh, browser and just see control F and paste it here. See, it will list out how many checkboxes are there. See, five, five checkboxes, five only, right? One, two, three, four, five. So that means this XPath is giving five checkboxes. Can you all see here? Or let me use, uh, so selector sub. So there also, whatever we constructed, you can use that. See, it is going to show five. See, all five are showing here. So five elements matching with this X path. So I want that one only. Five elements should match. So checkbox list. I got all of them into, so number of checkboxes. So now let's my checkboxes, I need to select each checkbox 
that's what I want to do. So I want to check this checkbox, right? That's what I need to check these checkboxes. That's what I need to do. If not selected, you need to select the checkbox. That's what the scenario we need to try it out. So basically observe here, I'm writing multiple at the rate test methods. Already two are done, third one we are building. And uh, I need to select this. If checked, I should not touch that. If not checked, I'll click on that. So uh, that's a scenario I need to write here. See, so I'll, I'll use uh, normal for loop int i equal to, so one, okay, int i equal to one, or the biggest collection starts with a zero, right? Uh, maybe I can use zero only. And i less than checkbox list dot size. Sorry. Checkbox list dot size. And semicolon i plus plus. Normal for loop I'm using. Before I used the for each loop. Now I'm using a normal for loop. So I don't know how many of you realized the control structures and methods uh, concept, how much important. So this is where control structures and methods only. Everywhere, see everywhere I'm writing methods only. So now I need to check whether this, this element is uh, checked or not. How can I check that? If not checked only, I will put. So collection dot, get of i get of i is not selected so is sorry is selected is selected means already checked but i want is not selected then you click on that then you click on that so i need to click on that I want to click. So here, so you should not use here, this one. I, I will write here, click on that. Click on each checkbox. So this, this represents the each checkbox. Get of zero dot. Click, because this is the element. This is the element collection dot get. See, collection type is of type web element. So the web element dot click method I'm doing. So maybe I'll wait some some time, okay? I'll wait a little bit time. I'll just give thread dot sleep. So one second I'm going to give. So one second I'm going to give. So that one second is very important. So thread dot sleep, and then after this, this is the for loop ending here, for loop ending here, right? After this, so after this, what I want to do here is, see, can you see this? If you uncheck, this won't be shown here, right? This won't be shown. If I check, the value is coming here. If I check, the value is coming here. If I check, the value is coming. After checking all the checkboxes, I want to get this dynamic text. So I want to get this a dynamic text. How can you fetch this dynamic text? So let's fetch this uh, dynamic text. So what is the X path you need to build for this? So now, see this is a dynamic, right? This is a dynamic. You cannot uh, hard code this. But this one is constant. This text is constant. So I'll build the X path for this. Based on this, I'm going to identify this element. Both. This element is different, this element is different. This tag is different, and this tag is different. What I'm going to do, I, I, I'm not sure about this text, right? So what I'm going to do, I'll identify this constant text with my X path, okay? So I know how to write X path for my, so otherwise you can, so if you don't know how to write, just use selector sub, okay? Just use selector sub. So you just use selector sub. So this guy also didn't give properly. 
But yeah, you can construct it. See, this guy is not giving proper. So he is taking ID, but here ID doesn't work. In this website, ID doesn't work. ID is a dynamic here. ID is a dynamic here. You cannot use ID in this website, in the entire website. If you use ID, next run it will fail because this value changes. That's the dynamic things. So dynamic things, you cannot use the IDs. And uh, I'm going to build my own XPath. Uh, that's why the object identification is a very crucial. So, and I'm going to use contains of text function, contains of text function, comma, and the text I'm going to give. So what is the text uh, you have selected? See, a lot of spaces are there. I'm ignoring all the spaces. That's what the contains will give you. So the provision for you. It has a lot of advantages, more flexible. See, now you identified the this you have a selected element. From there, I need to identify my next element. My next element, which access XPath will help us. Hmm? Based on one parent element, you want to identify that child. So what is the one you need to use? Following concept. Following is as the element tag. What is this element tag? You find it out. So that element tag is a span tag. So just write span. See, now it is recognizing this one. So this is the how you need to build and get the text of that. So fetch. So reporter dot log fetch the selected checkboxes text. True. I want to print that even in my console also. String check box text is driver dot find element by dot xpath. So write this xpath dot get text. So that's the whole program how you need to write that. Okay, so then you print it if you want. Just text is plus this value. Selected checkboxes text is. Okay. So that's the third test case. Now, fourth test case is, any questions I have before going for a fourth test case? So next we have a radio button test. So this one, radio button test, we have to, uh, so identify that. So go to the parent uh, page and then click on this radio button test so get this a similar i think it's a similar here and get this can reduce a lot of time that's why i'm just copy pasting so radio button test select radio buttons select radio buttons the description i'll just put a radio button test naming conventions method naming conventions you must use click on the radio button just put the link sorry
your button test and just change here. The title only changes here. So remaining, I'll just change it here. So radio button test, radio button title. So paste it. So that uh, assertion, weight and everything similar. So now this, we don't need this. We have to write. Let's join back and we'll write uh, for this. Uh, come back and we'll uh, finish this test case and I'll show you priority how to use and different uh, at the rate test keywords also we'll use so that uh, multiple test methods we are building here. Already four test cases, right? Four test cases, how to run in the order, how to run with the different combinations. We'll see all these combinations. So if you put a two uh, prioritized, two without prioritization. So we want to 